Well, you've almost made it to the end, folks. This week you'll be working on your final revisions and next week you'll be taking your final exam. I know this is your fourth time through the revision process, but just a couple of reminders. Check to make sure that you've met the requirement for the genre and the assignment. Are you arguing who gets responsibility for a specific event? If so, you're on the right track. Also, make sure that your introduction does the three things it needs to do. Hook your reader, set up your topic, lay out your thesis. Your thesis also has three parts. State your subject, your claim, and a forecast of your main points. Use your guiding features. In addition to your thesis, your title, topic sentences, and transitions are all there to help your reader understand your ideas. Make sure that your title is helpful and engaging. It needs to do more than just state the topic. Make sure that you have a fully developed conclusion that sums up your ideas and lets your reader know why they should care. Be very careful of your use of first person. Do not use first person opinion phrases like I think or I believe. Just Backspace right over those babies. You should only be using the first person if you're using your own life experience as support. Make sure that you include your scholarly source, check for an elevated tone, credentialed author, a scholarly publisher, and of course, citations. That's how you'll know the source is intended for an academic audience and not a general one. Check your formatting. You need a header with your last name and the page number. You need a heading that has your name, my name, the class, and the date. And finally, double and triple check your citations. You need both in-text parenthetical citations and end-of-text citations in a works cited list anytime that you use information that is not your own original idea. That's any fact, data, idea, image, or background information, whether it's quoted, paraphrased, or summarized. If it didn't spring from your own brilliant little brain, you need to give credit to your source. If you don't, that's plagiarism and you will fail the essay. It's the last one. You can make it. The assignment rundown for this week is going to be very familiar. Revise your essay using the revision checklist. Submit your essay to online tutoring. Complete a revision activity for your writing exercise and finish up Crooked House. You also have your fourth critical reading assignment, which is technically a critical listening assignment as it focuses on a podcast called All About Agatha. You can find their episode about Crooked House linked in this week's module, or you can search for it in your favorite podcatcher. Once you've listened to it, answer the questions for your assignment. It does spoil the end of the book, though, so I recommend that you finish the novel first. You also need to complete your discussion board this week. Your final exam next week will be an impromptu essay about the two novels that we've read, so if you need to review, there's also an episode of the podcast about Five Little Pigs. I've posted a review and some top tips in your modules if you want to start preparing now. However, this honestly isn't a test that you really need to study for. As long as you've read the novels, which you have, and you know how to put together an essay, which you do, then you'll be fine. However, if you want to practice with the lockdown browser, I've posted a practice exam for you to play around with. It's entirely optional, but I recommend that you log in before your exam at least to see how the system works. If you have any questions, as always, just let me know.